What is up everybody and welcome to the MCC 15 pre-show. We are so excited for this tournament and today I'm joined by my lovely co-hosts, Locky. Ah, uh, hi, I'm a Sagittarius. Uh, we also have Luca. Hey, how's it going? And finally, Saber. I don't have cancer. That's great news, Saber. So, the first little segment we're going to do today is the team introductions. We're going to go through each team, introduce them, and talk a little bit about their keys to victory. So, I'm going to start here with the red team. We have Dream, Satnap, Michael McChill, and Quackity. This team is going to be very oriented towards movement with a little bit of PvP. Dream did rather poorly in MCC 14 and is looking for some revenge. And he's doing it with a strong team of people that he's all teamed with before, and he's won with Michael McChill and Satnap. The MVP himself, the Tom Brady of MCC if you will, Pizza Hut leads the Orange Ocelots with a strong lineup of Pearlescent Moon, Green, and Shovel. This lineup is going to have a strong chance in team and movement games, but to be fair, Pete is good at every game, so they will do well. Gunning for third place, we've got the Yellow Yaks. Consisting of Captain Sparkles, Puns, Jack Manifold, and CVK, we may be looking at a real wild card of a team. After teaming up in the last event, CVK and Puns both excelled in player versus player challenges. If PvP games are given good multipliers, this team is sure to excel. While Captain Sparkle's last MCC left room for improvement, his current teammates leveled the playing field with their well-rounded gameplay. Meanwhile, with more experience and a new team under his belt, Jack is expected to outperform his first MCC placement. Overall, the Yellow Yaks need to make sure that they can get those early team games out of the way to build up some good old synergy. Up next, we have the Lime Llamas, consisting of Fruit Berries, Cara Corvus, the Orion Sound, and Solidarity Gaming, also known as Mr. Gaming, also known as an absolute gamer. This team is the only team in the event to have players that have never actually played with each other. None of the members have teamed with each other at all during MCC. Fruit is obviously expected to do well in this event, and possibly at first individual. Cara Corvus and the Orion Sound have both placed well recently, and is showing some major improvement from their previous events. This team's key to victory is Solidarity. He's the only player in the event to get bottom 5 and top 5. Depending on how he does, would be a major focus on whether the team does good or not. Fundy, Connor Eats Pants, and Philza Minecraft unite behind Tommy on the Green Guardians. This team, which is focused on PvP and movement, is looking to capitalize off of the success of previous teams, such as the Violet Vampires, which involve Tommy leading an unlikely group of heroes to surprising success. This is Wisp's chance to prove himself as a leader as he joins veteran Scott Smajor and two new faces, 5-Up and Ant Frost on the Cyan Creepers. On his way to S tier, Wisp can lead the team through the PvP games, while three-time winner Scott Smajor can add support in movement games. They'll show the two new rookies the way to win. Be sure to keep one out for Krinios, who will be joined by Kratzy, Captain Puffy, and Nikki Niachu on the Aqua Axolotls this MCC. Krinios and Kratzy team together often in earlier MCCs, scoring a combined two wins. The duo poses a real threat to those that typically place in the top 10. Captain Puffy has some skill of her own, placing 10th in MCC 7. In previous events, Nikki has shown her stuff as a strong support player with an impressive performance alongside Tommy in it, Tubbo, and Vicstar in MCC 14. This team is primarily looking for PvP or movement games, although they can still hold their own in events like Sands of Time and Buildmart. Blue consists of Quig, Flip, and Smallish Beans, and Preston Plays. They're quite a versatile team that'll do well in quite a few games, but most notably Bingo, having three of the best players in the event. Quig, Flip, and Smallish Beans got first as a team together in MCC8, and they are joined by Preston Plays for this event. I'll be looking at Flip as a player who can play well. He's had some incredible performances in the past, and some poor ones as well. These poor performances came on quite weak teams though. Given the potential strength he is on, this team could play quite well, and he could easily reach top 10. Illumina makes a dramatic return to MCC after putting on a dominant performance in MCC Pride. He's supported by an incredible cast of In the Littlewood, False Cemetery, and Ren Dog. For this team, it's going to be all about how much they're able to grind before the tournament as Illumina has proven that he can put in hours and hours of practice to get the win. Sound the alarm, Rambu has finally been unbanned and will compete on the Pink Parrots. He is joined by Tubbo, Wilbur Soot, and Discount Technoblade. Ah, uh, I mean Tapple. Tapple. And Tapple will have to take pink far in PvP games, while hopefully Wilbur can match the levels he reached in MCC Pride. Alright, that's all the team introductions out of the way. Now it's time for me and Luca to head over to the small screen, where we're going to talk about all the newcomers to MCC. Welcome to our rookie discussion. The first player I'm going to be talking about is Preston. Preston is an OG Minecraft content creator, well known for being in the pack with fellow MCC contestants Vicstar and Jerome ASF. 
Over the years, he's continued to improve his Minecraft skills, playing lots of Bed Wars, completing custom adventure maps, and participating in Minecraft Monday, where he got a win while teamed with Vic. He was also the origin of the don't worry, they are rusty meme that went down in Minecraft YouTube history. So, Luca, I'm gonna be honest, I could see Preston getting either top 10 or bottom 10 in terms of his individual placement. Like, both of those things seem conceivable to me. What do, how do you, how well do you think he's gonna do? Yeah, you know, I've actually got pretty high hopes for Preston. Even as his first event, he's got some serious experience uh, as a Minecraft player in general. Movement games especially are sure to be a strong suit, so I'm definitely keeping an eye on him. There was a phase in his YouTube career where he was trying to collab with like literally every other Minecraft YouTuber. He seems to be a very social and like friendly person, so I could see him having good chemistry with almost anybody that he teams with. Yeah, he's definitely shown to be a good team personality, so we'll, we'll have to keep an eye out to see how he performs with the rest of his team. While Antfrost isn't known much for content creation, he's recently become very popular for playing a major support role in Dream's Minecraft manhunts. We also see him taking on a more active role in the Dream SMP. Uh, not a lot going on for him in terms of PvP or true Minecraft events, so what are your thoughts on his placement, Stein? Well, I do remember hearing, now I, I can't confirm if this is true, but I do remember hearing that there was a year where he no-lifed Minecraft 1.8 PvP which if he did, that means that he is very much capable of grinding and tryharding things. So that does say a lot about just his ability to improve. Now, I don't know how much that says about what he'll do in his rookie performance. So we'll have to see about that. I think in a team setting, he's got a strong chance of playing a, a greater support role, but I'm not sure about individual placement. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how he fits into his uh, team dynamic with Wisp uh, leading the way, and S Major also kind of as a, as a team leader. It's interesting how the team is going to divvy up roles for each game that they play. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'll be interested to see how it's designated. Moving on to 5up. 5up is a YouTuber who's rumored to have been in the waitlist for quite a while. He's become known for Among Us content. He recently joined the OTV SMP. He's also active in the modded Minecraft community as an active player of both Vault Hunters and CogChamp SMP. So what I'm most interested in is to see how 5up, who doesn't primarily focus on Minecraft, is going to fit in with all these people who are known for tryharding Minecraft and ha having content specific to Minecraft. Yeah, if I'm being honest, we don't have a whole lot to go off of here. However, I think his interest in prior events is really promising. Shows some, show some real dedication to the craft here. And while he doesn't focus on Minecraft, he does play a lot of games in general, and skills in different games seem to generally transfer rather well to other games. It'll be interesting to see if 5up can translate just his general skills as a gamer and put it into these very specific custom games. Yeah, you mentioned Among Us in particular, which his series has gotten some, some pretty significant traction for, and I think that that sort of collaboration and team-based gameplay could really help him out here. Last but certainly not least, we've got Rambu. Professional lore streamer and baker extraordinaire, Rambo has been a spectacle to the Minecraft community ever since he took off during September and October of last year. Only two months after he began streaming, he was whitelisted on the Dream SMP and still regularly plays to this day. Although not active in competitive Minecraft, he often plays on Hypixel and shows some real promise in 1.8 PvP. He participated in MCU back in November and shows a fair bit of skill. While he may be new to MCC, he's no stranger to the community as a whole, so it begs the question, Stein, how do you think he'll perform overall? Well, it's the age-old question of does 1.8 PvP skill translate well to 1.9 plus PvP skill? And we've seen those skills transfer over very well, as evidenced by players like Techno and Calvin. And so I think there is a lot of potential for Rambo to excel at PvP games. Um, but at the same time, he's a rookie, he's never played MCC, and we haven't seen him grind any sort of 1.9 plus skills. So there's a lot of uncertainty here, but uh, one thing's for sure, it's gonna be a very entertaining stream to watch. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think there's a pretty big question right now as to whether or not his team is going to try hard the event or try to grind out some stuff for content. Regardless, I think that he's joined by Wilbur and Tubbo, and so no matter which games are played, they're sure to have a great team dynamic. Now that we've covered all the rookies in this MCC, I'm going to send it over to Locky for our next segment. Welcome to This or That, a segment in which Sabre and I are going to be given two scenario options of which is more likely to happen in the MCC event, and we're going to decide what is more likely to happen, this or that. 
pretty self-explanatory, but we'll be given five scenarios. So let's go through them and see how wrong we can predict. All right, let's start with the first one. Oh, uh, wow. All right. Captain Sparkles or CPK? Who's going to be more likely to end up in top 10 individual? What do you think, Saber? That's quite the question. I think it's Captain Sparkles. Yeah, why is that? As much as I'd like to say our good friend CPK might have a good chance of being top 10, I'm... He's only done it once before, and that was in a non-canon event. Well, the captain, as recently as MCC 12, got 10, top 10 in a rather weak team. Mm. So I think it's pretty unlikely, but it's quite possible the captain has a really good event and reaches top 10. You know Not, what? Yes. I want to get behind this bandwagon. I want to support Captain Sparkles as well. As a, as a loyal fan, I say that I'm going to pick Captain Sparkles for this. I think he will have the better chance of making the top 10. All right, let's have a look at the next one. Ah, oh. all right. Who's going to place higher, Dream or Satnap? Now, this is a good one because we know that Satnap has been getting better as of the past few events, but Dream has always been considered one of the S tiers. So this is a lot more difficult than the previous question. Of course, the two times they teamed together, Dream placed a ahead of Sapnap, but when they haven't been teamed together, Sapnap is arguably been outperforming Dream. Who knows if this will continue? I've noticed this. But I, yeah. Sapnap's been improving massively recently, and dare I say, if he gets first in this event, I'd consider him an S tier. Yeah, honestly, because I remember in MCC 14, Dream didn't have the best tournament in terms of placement, but I know that Sapnap did really well, and just for that reason, I think that Sapnap might even build on top of that performance and outplay Dream, even though they're going to be on the same team. So I'm going to go with Sapnap for this question. I think it's quite a good chance, maybe 50-50, that Sapnap outperforms Dream here. But I feel like Dream hasn't had that in any standout event in a while. I think he'll have another great one this time and do better than Sapnap. Ooh, so you say Dream. Interesting. All right, the next one. Which game is more likely to return, Rocket Spleef or Sands of Time? Oh, wow. This is more of a meta question, isn't it? I was thinking about this earlier. Um, I'm going to say Rocket Spleef. It's a much simpler game. It's one we haven't seen for a bit, but it should be returning, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I really hope Rocket Spleef comes back. I, I don't know how true this is, but I've done some readings on the Reddit, and it seems like Sands of Time might be getting some updates or overhauls, and it's a big complex game that may need a little more work. Rocket Spleef is fun. I feel like it'd be a little more easy. I can see that being more likely to, to be returning this one, even though neither of them or both of them could show up. We don't know. Mm, I'd love for that to happen. I want to see Philza Minecraft play, flying through the skies again. Yeah, we, we all do. We all love Philza Minecraft. All right, we got two more. Ah, who's going to place higher? It's another one, but this time it's with two of our new contestants, Rambu Ant Frost. Who do you think is going to place higher out of these two, Saber? I don't hmm. know. Hmm. Personally, I think Ant Frost is a bit better at Minecraft than Rambu. Um, and I think that gives him an edge, but I think Rambu's got a better team, and I think his team's going to do really well this event, and Rambu will ultimately place higher. Ant Frost being a newcomer with another newcomer on his team, 5-up, will also be a bit difficult. Um, I expect that he'll do quite well in future events, but I think for now, Rambo's going to play better. Yeah, it is hard to determine, seeing as we haven't seen either of these two play before, but I, I think I'm going to agree. I do like, because looking at it, it is easier to say that Rambo has a, a, a stronger team, not to say that Antfrost's team isn't strong, but I think Rambo might get some of those extra points he needs in team games because he has so many well you know good players on his team that he might just edge it out once again i think this will be close i don't know enough about them but i think i'll go with rambu as well all right last question all right survival games is it going to be played first or last this is always a toss-up because it might not be either of them but what's more likely do you think people are going to want to get it out of the way or keep pushing it off the way they did during mcc pride i'm gonna make a call here i don't think it'll be played at all i think we'll have more than eight games and people will be so afraid of survival games, they won't play it at all. It, that is some outside-of-the-box thinking. I don't know. I, I feel like people won't want to repeat what happened in the last event. Yeah, I get that. Let's see, what do I think? I think it'll play be played not first or eighth, right? I could see it being played sixth or seventh, but due to the fact that that's closer to eighth, one of the options, I will say eighth is more likely then for my option of this or that. It'll still have a high multiplier at that point, so that'll be a lot of points for whoever wins. 
very, very scary. And that concludes this or that with me and Saber. Now we're going to take it back over to the desk for individual predictions. Welcome back to the main desk. Now it's time to get into our predictions for what's going to happen in MCC 15. Starting with our individual predictions, I guess I'm going to go first. My first place prediction is Pete. I mean, is there any explanation needed for that? He's literally the Michael Jordan of MCC. Like, if there's anyone who's going to get first, it's going to be him. In second place, I predict Illumina. I think Illumina is going to grind a lot, as he always does for MCC 13 as well as MCC Pride. He's going to do the same exact thing and get second place individual. I think third place is going to be Quick with a very strong team surrounding him. He is in a perfect position to pop off similarly to how he did in MCC 8. My Dark Horse player today is going to be False Symmetry. I think she has shown that she can uh, grind and put in a lot of practice and convert that into real results as we've seen in MCC 9 and 10. Uh, I think surrounded by a player like Illumina who can inspire her to work very hard, she can really pop off and help carry her team into the finals. Interesting, interesting. I like your energy and I'm going to try and match it in a way, alright? My first overall is obviously Pete because if it's not Pete in your predictions, you need to get out. That's just a fact of life. There are three guarantees in life. Love death and pete being first in overall individuals however in second place i've gone super wild and i said sapnap i think sapnap is gonna go crazy and get second place on his team and third obviously it's lumina he's a beast not much else needs to be there he's always going to be top three if he isn't then i will kick myself in the face and i'm not that flexible so that will really hurt Anyway, my wild card player is going to be the man, the myth, the cursed player, Captain Jay Sparkles. I don't know why Jay is in there, but I think it sounds cool. Captain Sparkles really is the embodiment of a wild card player. He can do good, he can do poorly, but you know what? I, I, I believe in him, and that's all that matters. How about you? All right, so surprising everyone, I've put Pete as number one individually. Not only is he a strong player, as Stein and Lockie have mentioned, but with an accomplished team, I've got a feeling he's going to do really well overall. Uh, in second, I've got Sapnap. He's performed super well in prior events, and he's shown to be a strong leader. Uh, I really just can't see him doing poorly in this event. Rounding off the top three, I've got Fruit. He has a record of performing well individually, and we've seen some very impressive clutches in past events. So looking forward to some more of that this this MCC. Uh, for my wild card, I've chosen Preston. Even if he is a bit rusty, I have no doubt that he'll blow the new player average out of the water. Well, I also, unsurprisingly, have picked Pete as first individual. I think he's on a very good team, and he's Pete. He, that's his thing. He always gets first. Except when he doesn't. But that's rare. After that, I'm going to guess Quig. He tends to do quite well on good teams, and I think he's got a pretty good team. He's paired with his friend Preston, Quig and Flip, who will certainly play well with him. And third, a bit of a shocking decision, I'm going to say Tapple. And Tapple will end up getting his best individual performance yet and get third. And my dark horse is Flip. I think he's a very good player that can perform quite well. So Luca. Hey, what's up? I noticed that you put your wildcard player as Preston. Yeah. I know he has the potential to do pretty well, he's a great player, but no one has really done or it's been very rare for someone to go incredibly well on their first event and as much as i have faith in preston to smash it out of the park do you think that putting him in the top 10 may be too generous for someone on their debut performance i listen i know he's a new player but i've actually got quite high hopes uh i bet quite a good sum of money on preston placing well and so if anything how much how much? Uh, I can't legally disclose that information, but you can bet your money that it's quite a bit. Um, we've seen him practice in various other servers, even if it hasn't been quite to the extent of MCC. So even without prior experience, I'm hoping he's going to place pretty high. Now that we have our individual predictions out of the way, it's time to get to our team predictions. Now I'm going to start off with a bit of a controversial opinion. I'm going to put Red as my first place team. I think they have a, a large potential to pop off. I think Dream and Sapnap are going to be highly motivated to do very well. They both feel kind of sour after MCC 14 with Dream getting a very low placement and Sapnap coming ever so close only to fail in Dodgebolt. Um, I think they're going to be grinding and practicing a lot, and I think they are going to pop off rather nicely. 
in second place, I have the orange team. I'm not putting them in second because I think they're going to grind a lot. I just think they're a very OP team. Um, they don't really have a worst player. All the players are very, very capable of doing extremely well popping off, especially if they have a good game near the end, such as Sands of Time or Hole in the Wall. They are going to be a scary threat in this tournament. As my wildcard team, I have the Purple Pandas. Um, because Illumina is just a god, and if he grinds enough, he can do just about anything he sets his heart to. So I could see massive potential for Purple to shock the world and get, hell, even first individual. Stein, I like your predictions, except they suck. So let me do my predictions, because then they're going to be much better, alright? So, first overall, I'm saying Green Guardians, alright? That is your first team in Dodgebolt. They're going to place first overall because they have a good lineup, all right? This is the Tommy S tier arc. He's going to do it. He's been doing well so far this, this year. And, of course, Fills of Minecraft is just, well, Fills of Minecraft. You know, create the game. You're good at the game. It only makes sense. And the second place team, who will also be joining them in Dodgebolt, I think is going to be the Purple Pandas, because Illumina is absolutely cracked beyond belief, alright? He is just a beast. He grinds and he grinds, and he's just so good, it's just not fair. And he's got a good team behind him, so I think they're going to be your two Dodgebolt ones, in which I think Purple will come out on top, alright? They're going to be the Dodgebolt winners, while for the event, my Dark Horse team is going to be Aqua. And I think that they can do really well, or they might not do as well as they would hope. They can really end up anywhere between like third and seventh. So that's that's gonna be my my dark horse team. Yes, yes it is. All right, for my first team pick, I've got the blue bats. They have strong players overall, and Quig especially has high pop off potential. Uh, F Whip, Quig, and Joel have all teamed in MCC eight and placed first overall. Uh, they excelled especially at team games, and that shows a lot of promise for this MCC. Uh, in second, I have Orange Ocelots. Pete has proven to be a consistently strong player, and Green, Pearl, and Shelby are historically well-rounded. Uh, for my Dark Horse, I've actually got the Yellow Yaks. If they can figure out a way to blend their contrasting playstyles, I think they've got a pretty solid shot at higher placement. CPK mentioned some hardcore training, and Punts has placed incredibly well with a recent second place placement. I think overall, despite both teams being very talented, Blue Bats will come out on top. My choice for first is Orange. I think having Pete is a huge asset for them that'll help them reach dodgeball, and I think the rest of the team will do really well. In second, I have Blue. I think Quig will also do very well, and the rest of that team is really strong. My Dark Horse team is Pink. I think they can do really well and reach third in this event. And for my winner of dodgeball, I think Orange is ultimately going to win. I think Pete will have a very good dodgeball performance and get another win. All right, Lockie. Um, do you want to defend your completely insane team predictions real quick? I insane? Oh, come on. Think about it. Green team has fills of Minecraft, all right? Name a better Rocket Spleef player. Because for all we know, Rocket Spleef could return. And if it does, what if it's played last? If it's played last, that's just infinite coins for fills of Minecraft. All right, there's just so many possibilities, which is why predictions are difficult, but I would never want to just sit here and go with, oh, it's just going to be the favorites to win, right? Because look what happened last time. I said Pink wouldn't make Dodgebolt, and they didn't make Dodgebolt. Pink still did incredibly well, and they were kind of scammed by the game order. But that's my point. The game order is completely what defines everything. What makes you think that orange, blue, and red might underperform yeah. compared to green, purple, or aqua? I don't think they'll underperform. I think maybe the game order might not be in their favor, or that green and purple would perform over their expectations. I suppose there's potential for that. Now, I understand what you're saying about purple. I think Illumina has potential to pop up. But for green, do you really... Th I think the, the, the best that a team similar to green has done is Violet Vampires, and they got third, and they were pretty far behind second. So I don't really see your justification for the potential of that team popping off. And you talk about Rocket Spleef, but you gotta remember, Tommy is really not that good at Rocket Spleef, so he could balance out Phil's incredible talent. Alright, I'll give you three words to sum up my and defend my teams. Three words, alright? It's anyone's game. Uh, potentially. It could, it could be anyone's game. 
I, I will concede that I was not entirely confident when making my team predictions. But now that I've made them, I will defend them with my life. And I, <laughs> and I believe that red and orange are going to do extremely well this tournament. Thanks for tuning into our pre-show. Another thing you can tune into is our waiting room stream that we're going to be doing a couple hours before the event over on both of our YouTube and our Twitch channels. So make sure to stay tuned for updates on that. And we will see you all in the next video.